same thing is coming. Can you enlarge my photo? Good evening, my dear students. I am Dr. Jay Prakash K, Professor of Forensic Medicine. Let me talk on Forensic Medicine, rapid revision. Okay, I am going a bit faster because already you are well prepared for your examination. Okay, now, look at the question. <clears throat> the following is victim of firearm injury. What is the suspected distance of the shot? And generally, always they ask a question, an image they may uh, give and ask you, what is the range of the shot? Now, let me speak on firearm injuries. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry it was muted, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. Look, normally they give a question, they give an image and ask you what is the range of the firearm. Okay, now let me discuss on rifle firearm weapons. Okay, look at the picture. First you should know, once you fire a firearm, what are the products of firing? Now, you can see in the picture, you can see the flame, you can see the smoke and soot. At the same time, you can see the projectile in the form of the bullet. But in this picture, you cannot see the partially burnt and unburnt gunpowder. Now, look at this picture. Now, when the firearm is fired, gunpowder is going to burn. All 100% of the gunpowder will not convert into smoke and soot. Some particles are completely burned. The completely burnt particles give rise to soot and smoke. Some particles are partially burnt and unburnt. And these partially burnt and unburnt particles penetrate into the epidermis and get embedded into the dermis that give rise to a condition called peppering. Peppering or powder stippling. Okay. At the same time, completely burnt gunpowder convert into smoke and soot just get attached to the skin or cloth and it give rise to a condition called blackening the bullet projectile enters into the body causes a wound of entry along with the wound of entry there may be abrasion collar and grease collar okay now look here you can see the flame along with the flame there will be hot air when the flame and hot air touches the skin, it causes burning of the skin. Burning of the skin is also known as scorching of the skin. At the same time, when it burns the hair, it is known as singeing. Normally, we don't use the word singeing of the hair. Once you say singeing, that means burning of the hair. Now, in this picture, you can see the flame. You can see the smoke and soot. You can see the powder particles at the same time you can see the bullet okay this is the basic now let us discuss what are the products of firing and its effect on the body already i mentioned now for your study reference look here i have given a diagrammatic representation the flame and hot air as you know it causes scorching or burning of the skin at the same time
importante. Okay, dear students, I'm extremely sorry. There is some technical problem. Let me start from the beginning again. Rifle firearm wound ballistics. You can see in this picture, when the firearm is fired, what are the products of firing? You should know. Once the gunpowder is burnt, it gives rise to the flame. You can see this picture. You can see the flame. At the same time, when the gunpowder is completely burnt, it gives rise to smoke and soot. But some gun part of gunpowder is not burnt completely. Some are unburnt and some are partially burnt. That give rise to a condition called tattooing or peppering. At the same time, one more product of firing that is the most important is the bullet. When the bullet hits the body, it give rise to wound of entry surrounded by grease collar and abrasion collar. Again, I'm going to show it again. When the flame touches the skin, it burns the skin that is known as burning of the skin or scorching of the skin. When the smoke and soot touches the skin or cloth, it gives rise to a condition called blackening or smudging. When the powder particle hits, it gives rise to peppering or tattooing. And when the bullet hits the skin, it gives rise to wound of entry with grease collar and abrasion collar. Now, I am showing you a diagrammatic representation. Now, I repeat again, that is very, very important to understand the wound ballistics of rifle firearm. The flame causes burning or scorching and singeing. The soot and smoke causes blackening or smudging. The powder particle give rise to peppering or tattooing or powder stippling and the bullet give rise to a wound of entry with grease collar and abrasion collar. Okay. Now, Look at the question, one of the simplest question asked in initial examination. In a firearm injury, tattooing is noted around the wound of entry. The cause for tattooing is, all of you know very well, all of you know very well, the answer is unburned gunpowder particles. Okay. Now, let me discuss on the different ranges of rifle firearm. Look here. There are five different ranges of rifle firearm. Number one, contact shot. Contact shot means the muzzle end of the gun is in contact with the skin of the target or the victim. A, just muzzle end is touching. What do you mean by close shot? Close shot or close range. Muzzle end of the gun is just away from the skin, but within the range of the flame, within the range of the flame. That means, if you look at this picture, the target or the victim is just away from touching the muzzle, but within the reach of the flame. Number three, near shot or near range. Near range means the victim is away from the reach of the flame, but within the reach of the suit and smoke within the reach of the suit and smoke that is between b and c number four intermediate range intermediate range means the victim is beyond the reach of the smoke and suit but within the reach of partially burnt and unburnt powder particles and finally distant range distant range means the victim a Away from the reach of all other products of firing except the bullet. Except the bullet. Now, what are the effect on the body and various ranges? Now, already you got an idea. If the person is in the distant range, there will be only wound of entry with grease and abrasion collar. If the person is in intermediate range, there will be wound of entry surrounded by peppering or tattooing. If the person is in the near range, there will be wound of entry caused by the bullet plus 
tattooing because of the powder particles plus blackening or smudging because of the soot and smoke. If the person is in close range, close range, there is wound of entry plus tattooing plus blackening plus burning of the skin or scorching of the skin and singeing of the hair. Singeing of the hair. Okay. And finally, contact shock. Contact shock. In case of contact shock, all the products of firing enters into the wound truck, especially in case of hard contact, I'm going to explain later. Then you get a wound of entry with impression of the muzzle, muzzle, that I'm going to explain later. Okay. Now, coming, number one, distant range. Distant range. Distant range means only the bullet hits the person. What happens in case of firing at a distant range? As you know very well, the bullet causes, bullet causes, bullet causes wound of entry. At the same time, once the bullet is passing through the barrel, all the, the whatever the grease used for the lubrication of the barrel to prevent rusting or some fibers, all the debris from the environment which enters into the barrel, that is taken along with the bullet and once the bullet causes wound of entry, these so-called foreign bodies or debris or even grease get wiped around the margins of the wound that give rise to a condition called grease collar. At the same time, at the time of entry of the bullet, there is imagination of the skin. The imaginated skin comes in contact with the spinning bullet. It scrapes the epidermis, give rise to an abrasion or sometimes contusion or sometimes both abrasion and contusion collar around the wound of entry. This is what you see in case of distant range. I will show you the actual image. Look here. You can see the wound of entry. You can see the wound of entry surrounded by. In the image, you cannot see the grease collar, but you can see beautiful abrasion. Okay, that is regarding distant range. Now, coming to the intermediate range. Already have become expert in that. Intermediate range means between C and D. That means within the reach of the powder particles, but beyond the reach of the soot and smoke. So here, Appearance is similar to distant range, but in addition to that, there will be peppering or tattooing. Peppering or tattooing. Now, look at the picture. You can see the wound of entry with the abrasion collar with peppering. With peppering. Okay. Now, look at the question. Only tattooing around the wound of entry is seen in intermediate shot. Intermediate show. Now, look at the question which I asked in FMG December 2020. A dead body with gunshot wound is brought to the mortuary. On examination, there was a wound of entry with abrasion collar and inverted margins surrounded by tattooing without burning and blackening. That means, answer is intermediate. At the same time, if there is peppering plus blackening, it is near shot. Peppering plus blackening plus singeing or burning, that means it is close shot. Okay. Now, coming to the near shot, person is between B and C. There will be wound of entry, tattooing plus blackening. It is the picture of intermediate, but in addition to that, because of the smoke and soot, there is blackening. Blackening. I will show you the actual image. Look here. Look here. It is near shot. Now, see exactly the difference between intermediate and near. In intermediate, there is no smudging or blackening, but in near, there is smudging. Okay. Only tattooing and blackening around the wound they are seen in near shot. Near shot. Now coming to the close range. Close range means within the reach of the flame. Same as near range, 
that is wound of entry, abrasion collar, grease collar, blood tattooing, blackening. But in addition to that, there is singeing of the hair and burning or scorching of the skin. Normally in the exam, they don't give the image of close range. That is because it is almost impossible to see the singeing and burning of the skin in case of an image. Okay. Now, singeing of hair is seen in close shot. Close shot. Tattooing around wound of entry is seen in. Tattooing around the wound of entry is seen in. Contact shot. No. Distance shot. No. All the above. No. Answer is close shot. Close shot. Okay. Now, lastly, coming to the contact shot. Contact shot means muzzle is in contact with the skin. Look here. It is contact in the shoot. Here, I would like to classify under three headings. Number one, hard contact or firm contact or tight contact means there is indentation of the skin. Indentation of the skin. The muzzle is not only touching the skin, it is pressed over the skin where there is indentation of the skin. When there is indentation of the skin, entire products of firing will enter into the wound tract. Absolutely no gap between the muzzle and the skin which give rise to a muzzle impression. Muzzle impression. All the products enter into the wound tract. Nothing escapes between the muzzle and the skin. So, you see, wound of entry with muzzle impression. Muzzle impression. Okay, that is hard contact. Number two, loose contact. Loose contact means there is no indentation. There is no indentation. Muzzle is touching the skin. But once the bullet is fired, when the bullet causes imagination of the skin, there will be a gap between the muzzle and the skin. Through the gap, I, as I showed in the arrow, the smoke, even the flame may escape, which causes the position of smoke and soot around the wound of entry, at the same time, burning of the skin and singeing of the hair. So, what are the findings you see is, Black deposition around the wound known as corona. Corona. So you see blackening that is known as corona. In addition to that, there is burning of the skin or scorching of the skin. There is singeing that means burning of the hair. And generally, there will be no muzzle impression. Generally, there is no muzzle impression because there is no firm contact between the muzzle and the skin. It is highly unlikely. Very rarely, it may be there. But generally, it is not seen. Okay. That is regarding loose contact. Now, how to differentiate between loose contact and near shot? In near shot, there is blackening. In addition to that, there is tattooing. But in case of loose contact, there is only blackening. No tattooing. Okay. Number three, angled contact means muzzle is kept at an angle. Muzzle is kept at an angle. There is a gap between the skin and muzzle due to angular position. Everything will escape except the bullet. Except the bullet. Including the powder particles. So, it gives rise to blackening. It is dispersed in a overward manner. Plus tattooing, plus burning, plus singeing, plus partial muzzle impression. Partial muzzle impression. That is angled contact. Angled contact. Okay. I hope all of you understood properly. Okay. Corona is seen in loose contact shot. Loose contact shot. But there is difference if a gun is fired on bony areas like the skull or the stern. Here what happens is, when the person fires the gun, majority of the gases will enter into the wound tract. 
but some amount get escape between the bone and the subcutaneous tissue and it forms a temporary bulge temporary bulge most of the time contact shots are suicidal in nature not always most of the time once the gun is dropped whatever the gas has collected in the bulge try to come out forcibly once it comes out forcibly it tears the skin irregularly it splits the skin irregularly and it gives rise to cruciate or stellate shaped wound as you see in the picture cruciate or stellate shaped wound cruciate or stellate shaped wound so that you get one large irregular wound of entry large irregular wound of entry okay that is the difference whenever you see cruciate wound your answer is contact shot contact shot okay large irregular entrous wound is seen in contact shot contact shot stellate wound is seen in contact wound. okay now what about cherry red discoloration all of you know very well when our hemoglobin comes in contact with carbon monoxide it forms cherry uh, it forms carboxy hemoglobin which give rise to cherry red discoloration cherry red discoloration to get the carbon monoxide that should be smoke when you get the smoke you get the smoke in contact shot close shot and near shot so cherry red discoloration of the wound or wound track is seen in case of contact shot close shot and near shot remember that okay they may ask a question cherry red discoloration seen in all the following range except distant or intermediate okay now all together i am showing you a picture distant shot only wound of entry intermediate wound of entry with tattooing then near range wound of entry tattooing plus blackening close shot i don't have image i told you it is not possible tight contact muscle impression and on the bony areas usually you can see stellate wound i hope all of you understood the wound ballistics of course nobody is answering just tell me okay there is some lagging okay there is some lagging so i can't say whether you understood i i, I can't understand immediately otherwise i have to wait i don't want to waste time by waiting you please you please send messages i will see later okay and if at all you have any doubts or anything you please tell me okay okay now look at the question same question what i showed in the beginning which is asked in ems may 16 it does not mean that they don't ask for fmg or the same question can be repeated for any type of examination and don't be under the impression that fmg exam is very easy no fmg exam and uh, neat exam almost same even any set questions can be asked in fmg okay if at all i show a question from any set don't be under the impression that why i am showing such questions such questions will not be asked for fmg no nothing like that okay any questions can be asked only thing you should understand the subject that's all okay so answer is intermediate shot intermediate shot okay now come into the bullet shot into the skull sometime they give you a image of a skull with a wound of entry and ask you whether it is wound of entry or wound of exit okay now look here when the spinning bullet hits the skull in skull there is outer table and inner table once it hit the outer table it drills the outer table and it forms a clean cut in the outer table as it enters into the inner table the big piece of inner table will be shattered give rise to a condition called crater formation or beveling okay i will show you the picture it is just like imagine there is a plastered wall if you take a drilling machine and start drilling as you enter 
it forms a clean cut at the entry as it comes from the other side of the plastering a big piece of plaster cement plastering will fall give rise to a crater formation same thing here at the wound of entry in the outer table it is cut neatly but once it comes out from the other side the outer table is beveled look at the picture look at the picture now by looking over at these two pictures you can say the first picture is wound of entry and second picture is wound of exit second picture is wound of exit look here again i repeat clean cut at the wound of entry on the outer table but inner table at the wound of entry will be beveled at the wound of exit inner table is clean cut outer table is beveled i will show you a picture look here bullet shot into the skull wound of entry wound of entry the outer table is clean cut inner table there is beveling now how to say this particular picture is inner table i will show you the next analogous picture okay how we have to differentiate whether it is inner table or outer table i will tell you okay i will tell you okay at the same time wound of exit the inner table is cleanly cut whereas outer table there is beveling outer table there is beveling already i showed you a picture again i am going to show you the picture again i am going to show you the picture okay look here identify what is your answer already i showed you already i showed you already i showed you okay it is clean cut outer table wound of entry look here first you have to say whether it is wound of entry or wound of exit beveling can be seen but whether it is inner table or outer table it is inner table why number 1 you see the glistening surface glistening surface is seen in glistening surface is seen in inner table inner table at the same time you can see the vascular groove the vascular groove is seen in the inner table so it is in the inner table it is in the inner table beveling in the inner table is wound of entry wound of entry okay wound of entry of course i am not getting the many messages from any of the students i don't know why if you don't send the messages that means that you have understood properly let me see again no no messages at all okay now look here beveling in the outer table wound of exit wound of exit okay now look here beveling at the wound of outer table it is wound of exit now identify identify wound of entry because clean cut clean cut here you can see the beveling that mean it is wound of exit it is wound of exit okay okay i'm sorry now i started getting the messages crystal clear hemosiderin what is that hemosiderin Cherry red discoloration is not due to hemosiderin. That is because of the carboxyhemoglobin. Okay. 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 I am very happy that all of you are understanding properly. Okay. Keep it up. Okay. Wound of entry and exit over the skull can be differentiated from beveling, from the beveling. crater like outer table of the skull is seen in exit wound of the gunshot exit wound of the gunshot beveling of inner table beveling of inner table means wound of firearm entry wound of firearm entry now coming to the another picture 
You can see a ligature mark and they asked, identify whether it is imprint abrasion or pressure abrasion or contact abrasion or linear abrasion. Question is easy, but many students get confused between how to differentiate between imprint abrasion and pressure abrasion. Or sometimes, imprint abrasion, pressure abrasion, patterned abrasion. What is the difference? Nothing to worry. It is simple. What are the types of abrasion scratches? I don't want to explain. Almost all of you must have suffered at least one scratch during your lifetime. Scratches. Okay. Number two, greases. Greases out of all types of abrasion, most common abrasion is grazes or graze abrasion, especially seen in road traffic accident. When a broad surface of the skin slides or scrapes against a rough or broad surface, then you get graze abrasion. Okay. Number three, imprint abrasion. Let me tell you how to differentiate between imprint abrasion and Pressure abrasion. Just remember one point. Imprint abrasion is always caused by momentary impact. Momentary impact. <laughs> For example, car tire passes over the body, leaving tire thread marks. There is no sustained pressure. It is momentary impact. Or I take a whip and hit on a person which give rise to whip marks, impression of the whip over the skin. That is imprint abrasion because momentary impact. Same time, I use the same whip to strangle a person around the neck. There is sustained pressure. That is pressure abrasion. Oh, I take a nylon rope or even coy rope and hit on a person. It is imprint abrasion. If I use for tying a person, what mark you get is pressure abrasion. Okay, now you are perfect. Now look here. This person must have hit his forehead against a metal mesh. Give rise to impression. Momentary impact. Where uh, in case of hanging or strangulation, pressure is sustained. There is sustained pressure. Sustained pressure. So here the answer is pressure abrasion. Okay. Now, teeth bite marks. If you see the impression of the teeth, that means that person has applied pressure and which is sustained. It is example of pressure abrasion. All teeth bites are not pressure abrasion. If you just bite and take a piece of the skin, then it will lacerate you. Okay. Now, what is the difference between pattern abrasion, pressure abrasion, imprint abrasion? Look here. This is very, very important. Whether it is an imprint abrasion or pressure abrasion, whatever it is, if the pattern is imprinted, where you can identify the pattern, <laughs> pattern, then it is known as pattern abrasion. And remember, pattern abrasion is the best term to use. Best term to use whenever you can identify the causative object, best term to use is pattern abrasion. Now we know the difference between pattern abrasion, imprint abrasion, pressure abrasion. I hope all of you understood. Just write yes or no. Just write yes or no. Luckily, now there is no, no lagging. Okay, tell me. Yes or no? Yes, good. Okay. Look at the picture now. The same question asked in initial examination number 22. The picture depicts. Answer is pressure abrasion. <coughs> pressure abrasion. Meantime, I change the options. Now I put one more option. What is that option? Patent abrasion. So here the best answer is patent abrasion because I told you patent abrasion is the best term to use. 
I hope all of you understood. Okay. Now, look at this question. I am not going to tell you the answer now, but uh, please tell me your answer so that I will see how much you know about that. Okay. Identify the type of injury, whether it is lacerated wound, incised wound, stab wound or chop wound. Just give me the answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Some people have already written incised wound. Some people said uh, chop wound. Some people said stab wound. Okay. Different answers. Same student, say for example, whether it is Anjay Kumar or Ruthul Panchal or Kusum or whoever it is, after I explain, you tell me the answer. Okay. Now, how to differentiate between lacerated wound, incised wound and chop? Look here. The lacerated wounds are always caused by blunt weapon. Incised wounds and chop wounds are caused by sharp weapon. But incised wounds are caused by sharp cutting light weapon like a razor blade, barber's knife or kitchen knife or dagger. Whereas chop wounds are caused by sharp cutting heavy weapon like a sword, butcher's knife, axe. Okay. Now imagine, listen carefully, don't type any message or anything, just listen to me carefully. I take a stone and hit on a person forcibly. It causes invagination of the skin. When the threshold of the invagination crosses the stretching, it tears. Skin just tears. Once it tears, the margins will be irregular. Margins will be irregular. Look at this wound. This is a lacerated wound. Look at the margins. Margins are irregular, irregular, irregular. It is not regular. It is irregular. Okay. At the same time, the imaginative skin come in contact with the side of the stone. That causes abraded or contoured edges. Look here at the arrow. If I take one rubber band in my hand and ask you to hit with the iron rod, what happens to the rubber band? Nothing happens. It just stretches. That's all. It does not get transected. Meantime, if you hit with a knife, your rubber band will get transected. So here, the neurovascular bundle, the nerves and vessels, including lymphatics, if at all, Usually, it does not get transected unless underlying bone is there, it may get transected because of the crushing. Otherwise, usually it does not get transected. These things are known as tissue bridges and these tissue bridges are intact. Remember, whenever you see tissue bridges <coughs> running across the wound, immediately you can say that it is a lacerated wound. It is not incise or chop. Okay. This is the diagrammatic representation showing the tissue breaches. Okay. And even wound edges, margins are irregular. Now coming to the image. Identify. <clears throat> it is not a big deal. As soon as you see two bridges, immediately you can say that it is lacerated. Lacerated. Now coming to the incise wound. Incise wounds. Incise wounds are caused by sharp cutting light weapon. Imagine I take a blade and cut my skin. It cuts the skin neatly. So, margins are regular. Margins are regular. <coughs> okay, margins are regular. Meantime, there is no imagination of the skin. The edge of the blade does not come in contact with the edge of the wound. So, edges are not contoured or abraded. The cut at a depth of 1 cm up to 1 cm, everything is cut neatly. Tissue bridges are not intact. Not intact. Now, Whoever I told, whether it is Shade or Ruthul Panchal or Jagyesha Peter about the picture what I showed before, now already you must have realized what is the answer. 
This is the dominant representation of the insides wound. Everything is cut neatly. This is the wound what I showed. What I showed. Okay, what I showed is this is the wound. Now, now it is not uh, lacerated. Uh, which one you are talking? Why you are telling that? It is a lacerated wound. See, this is a chop wound. Chop wounds are caused by sharp cutting heavy weapon like an axe. The sharp edge of the blade cuts the skin neatly. Margins are regular. But imaginated skin comes in contact with the side of the blade, heavy blade, which give rise to contoured or abraded edges. At the same time, tissue bridges are not intact. Tissue bridges are not intact because the sharp weapon cuts continuously. Okay. You understood? Now, identify the type of injury. Identify the type of injury. Incise versus chop. Incise versus chop. Okay. Incise versus chop, very easy. In case of incise wound, margins are neat, cleanly cut. Chop wounds, margins are clean. But edges of incise wound is not abraded or contused, whereas edges of a chop wound is contused or abraded. Okay, so here the answer is laceration. Now, the following patient has which type of injury? What you have to see? First, you see the neurovascular bundles, they are not intact. You cannot see any neurovascular bundle, so it may not be a lacerated wound. Look at the margins. Regular. Margins are regular. See the edges. Edges are abraded as well as bruised. That means it is a chop wound. It is a chop wound. Okay. Identify the type of injury. Yeah, somebody ask. How to differentiate between incise and chop wound? Incise wound already I showed the margins are regular, it is not contoured. In this particular wound, you see the lower margin, lower edge, you see. It is contoured. So, answer is chop wound. I hope all of you understood. I hope all of you understood. Yes or no, you tell me. Yes or no. If you say no, don't ask me to repeat. Okay. You can. Go through the video again in the YouTube. Okay. The type of stab wound caused by a knife over the thigh is known as. The type of stab wound caused by a knife over the thigh is known as. Anyone? Please answer. I just wait. Okay. Okay. No. Lagging is there. I can't wait. What is the answer? Knife over the thigh. Let me explain, don't worry. What are the different types of stab wounds? It all depends where the stab has entered. Where the stab has entered. Chop wound inside material like laceration, but margins are clear. Hey, come on. Hey, hey. Okay. Now, entry of stab bone, entry of stab bone, it may enter into a cavity or other than the cavity or it may come out from the other side of the body. Entry and exit. Depending on that, depending on that, it is classified under three broad headings. If it enters into any cavity like cranial cavity, thoracic cavity or abdominal cavity, it is known as penetrated wound. It is known as penetrated wound. Okay. Only major cavities of the body. If you put your finger into your nasal cavity, it is not a stab wound. Okay. It is not a stab wound. Okay. 
or if you take a toothpick and put it in your mouth it is not a stab wound remember that at the same time it is enters into other than the cavity like buttocks deltoid cough thigh then it is known as punctured wound punctured wound punctured wound okay at the same time it if it comes out from the other side of the body perforated perforated now stab wounds are always caused by pointed weapon the pointed weapon may be sharp pointed weapon or blunt pointed weapon sharp pointed weapon like a knife blunt pointed weapon like a iron rod now you imagine if i take a knife and stab a person the external wound look like an incised wound external wound look like an incised wound at the same time if i stab a person using a iron rod external wound looks like lacerated wound depending on the external wound appearance again it is sub classified under 222 classification incised penetrated lacerated penetrated incised punctured lacerated punctured incised perforated lacerated perforated okay okay understood i hope you understand you have to understand okay 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 it is so simple like 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 okay now only one exception is penetrating into the neck if a tall platysma is transected then they use the word penetrating injury to the neck only one exception other than the body cavity there is no cavity in the neck but if platysma is transected we use the word penetrating injury to the neck okay penetrating injury to the neck okay sakla and farooq injection hypodermic syringe if inject into deltoid it is incised punctured it is not so blunt you know tip is beveled so it cause incised if you take double beveled uh, hypodermic syringe then it may be lacerated punctured if you take a long needle introduce into the abdomen then it is penetrated if you take very long needle and penetrate from one side of the chest it comes out from the other side it perforated okay now come into the picture what type of injury is this tell me okay double edged knife or sword entered and come out from the other side so first you have to look into the weapon sharp pointed weapon in size come out from the other side perforated in size perforated in size perforated okay at the same time iron rod has entered into the abdomen lacerated penetrated lacerated penetrated okay knife entered into the chest incised penetrated incised penetrated knife abdomen incised penetrated incised penetrated okay at the same time now the wound which is terminating in a body cavity is termed as already know the answer penetrating a pencil has entered the palm and come out on the dorsum of the hand lacerated perforated lacerated perforated screw driver over the thigh screw driver lacerated thigh punctured lacerated punctured but lacerated punctured option is not there so answer is none of the above none of the above okay 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 fatima maryam fatima kusum discard fusion asif ali why are you scared man don't be scared okay i am one of the coolest person <laughs> don't get scared of me okay 
Now, type of stab caused by a knife over the thigh. Knife inside, thigh punctured. Inside, punctured. Ooh. Now, I think all of you have become expert in stabbing. Means, not stabbing, stabbing is. Okay. Recently, they ask a lot of questions where many students are confused between hesitation cuts, tentative cuts, defense cuts, fabricating injury, self-infected injury. Now, let me explain. Why I explain? Because my job is explaining. Okay. Look here. Hesitation cuts. If a person wants to commit suicide by cutting his body, normally prefer two areas in the body, number one wrist, number two neck. Cut wrist injury, cut throat injury. Nobody will go into cut on the abdomen or thigh or somewhere generally, unless he is mentally ill. See, people say that uh, the one who commits suicide is a coward, but it is not so easy to get the courage to commit suicide. Before committing suicide, to get, gather sufficient courage, a person may take a knife, he may go for some trial cuts, rehearsal cuts, or he may go on thinking, shall I die, shall I die, shall I die. At the end he thinks, let me die. He go for a deep cut. Under hesitation, what tentative or superficial cuts he makes is known as hesitation cuts or suicidal. This uh, cuts, exploratory marks or suicidal in manner. Suicidal manner. Okay. Yeah, you may be right also to check the sharpness. <laughs> but generally, they <laughs> bring one sharp weapon only. Okay, who will bring a blunt weapon? At? Okay. Now, look here. Fabricated injury is also called fictitious injury or forged injury or invented injury. It may be self-inflicted, means inflicted on his body of his own or he may ask one of his friends, Hey, come here man, can you please beat on my back and he issue an iron rod or whatever it is. Now, why people want to make injury on their own body? Maybe to gain sympathy, maybe from lovers. If a girl is not interested in a boy, boy is very much interested. Then he may cut somewhere his body, maybe arm or forearm, or stand all. Then next day he comes with a bandage. Then her friend tells him, see, 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 he cut his body and to gain sympathy. Out of frustration, he don't qualify once, twice, thrice, four, five times he don't qualify. Out of frustration, oh shit. And you may go and cut your body out of frustration. False allegation. You only make some injuries on your body and you go and to complete, go, go and lodge a complaint in the police station that one of your enemies assaulted you. And for the false allegation, it may be done by others also, but not for gain sympathy and out of frustration him, himself. Why false allegation? Number one, to support a false charge, as I said. And number two, to avert suspicion. For example, I am an ATM uh, security guard. I join hands with the robbers. I only allow them and open key everything. They rob at last. They may hit on me and I go and tell. During investigation, that robbers have come and assaulted me and taken the money. Okay. Forget about that. Forget about that. Okay. Fabricated wounds are mostly incise wounds. Because if at all you want to form some injuries on your body, easiest is incise wound. You don't get much pain also in incise wound. It is mostly incise wounds. Okay. Look at this. Now. What type of injury is there? Fabricated wounds. You can see superficial wounds are not an idea of uh, committing suicide. By this, who will die? Maybe self-inflicted. Maybe he asked some of his friends to make some injuries on his body because back such injury very difficult to form. You have to do all such things. At Remember, all these are forged injuries or fabricated injuries. 
multiple injuries not on the vital aspect like wrist and neck it is not hesitation cuts fabricated injury maybe self inflicted you can see again some cuts with some inflammation around again it is fabricated injury defense wounds if somebody comes to assault someone his reflex action is to protect his body maybe by avoiding the blow or by holding in movies always they hold even if it is a talwar they just hold and bend it and throw it that is different okay now whenever is injury over the palm or aspect defense wounds or in the respect of the forearm maybe dorsum of the hand he may fall over the ground he may raise his feet maybe seen on the feet also okay now you have a good idea how to defend but yourself inflicted tentative and defense injuries okay this injury suggest you of see ask in neat pg 2022 very easy defense cuts the following picture depicts only thing you should know tentative injury cuts are also known as hesitation cuts tentative cuts means hesitation cuts identify it is not a tentative cut it is not a defense cut it is self inflicted injury of course it is a cut also self inflicted okay fabricated injury now coming to the hypostasis here what you have to remember hypostasis is also known as suggestion in exam always they use the word suggestion when the person dies blood flows on the dependent parts of the body and stains the skin as well as viscera on the dependent parts except on areas where there is pressure between the body and the underlying surface say for example in this case you can see the pale area normally pressure areas are occiput scapular area back of the arm buttocks calf those areas are known as areas of contact flattening so it is seen on dependent parts of the body but not on areas of contact flattening because of the compression of the capillaries the capillaries get compressed so blood cannot flow into the compressed capillary so we can see the pale see here you can see okay disappears was the petrifaction begins disappears once the petrifaction begins make be the petrifactory gas if it shift or it merges with the color of petrifaction okay identify aims 2018 suggestion identify aims may 2019 suggestion suggestion flattening remains until petrifaction starts or begins true for areas of contact flattening or it is seen on dependent areas yes it is due to compression of the capillaries yes it disappears along with the onset of petrifaction yes all three are true okay I didn't tell you the finding in the image. Another favorite question. So many times they ask, "What is this?" You can see the venous pattern. You can see the discoloration of the superficial veins. Superficial veins, marbly. See, ask in inset number twenty-two. They ask in all different types of examinations. Okay, what happens? Once the person dies, decomposition starts. Then putrefaction starts. Putrefaction starts. The main culprit ba bacteria is Clostridium perfringens or Clostridium welsi, which liberates hydrogen sulfide. The hydrogen sulfide combines with hemoglobin, forms sulfmeth hemoglobin. Sulfmeth hemoglobin. The sulfmeth hemoglobin stains the walls of superficial veins. as you see in this picture it starts in about 24 hours but become prominent in about 36 to 48 hours 
He starts, but not visible. Not visible. Now look here. Marbling is noticed by. What is your answer? Tell me. 24 or 36. What is your best answer? Some of you may say 24. Some of you may 36. But best is 36. Because. Because. It is not visible at 24. Usually. Okay. Yes. Good. All of you have written that. It is 36. Look at the another picture. Venus pattern. Mosaic pattern. Look another two. Mosaic pattern. Okay. See again. Second. M16. The following patient brought for an autopsy. What is the cause of discoloration of the region pointed below? Self myth hemoglobin. Self myth hemoglobin. Okay. The postmortem change seen in the image corresponds. See the third time. Answer is marbling. Again, true about the picture shown below. What is the answer? Is it marbling? Is it marbling? No. It is filigree buds. Filigree buds. Now we should be in a position to differentiate between marbling and Filigree burns. How to differentiate? I will show you. Look here. Filigree burns, it is thinner, tortuous and branches of tree-like pattern. Whereas marbling is comparatively thicker, mosaic, irregular pattern, venous pattern, not like branches of tree. Okay. Also known as Lichtenberg flower marks or arborescent marks. Lichtenberg flower marks or arborescent marks. Feathering. Pattern of a feather. Okay. Ferning. Ferning. Or keronographic buds. Kerono means thunderbolt. Keronographic buds. Okay. See here. We call it a filigree burn, but strictly speaking, it is not a true burn. It is not like a flame burn or scald or whatever. It is not exactly a true burn. It is due to the lysis of RBCs along the path of electric current. Along the path of electric current. Not seen in all the cases. Seen in about 20 to 33 percent of cases. This appears in about one to two days, pink to brownish in color. Pink to brownish in color. Okay. Pink to brownish in color. Okay. Lightning flower, Lichtenberg flower is seen in lightning. True about the picture shown below, seen in all cases, no. It is seen in 20 to 33 percent. It is a class of burn, no. It is not a true burn. Follow vascular channels. No. It is due to the lysis of RBC along the path of the current. Disappears one to two days. Correct. Correct. Now you can see the different all upper three pictures are filigree birds. Lower three pictures. One picture you may not see properly because of me. Don't be under impression. I am also marbling. Okay. Okay. Finished. Evidence in a court of law. There are two types of evidence. Number one, oral evidence. Number two, documentary evidence. Whatever the person goes to the court of and tell orally is oral evidence. In oral evidence, there are three types of oral evidence. Number one, direct evidence. Number two, indirect evidence. Number three, hearsay evidence. Okay. What is direct evidence? Direct oral evidence means the person has got personal knowledge about the fact. Every person will have five senses. Some people have six or seven senses like common sense, nonsense, whatever it is. I am talking about actual senses. If a person goes and tells in the court of law what he has seen, what he has heard, what he has smelt, what he has tasted or what he has touched, it is known as. Eyewitness 
एविडेंस ऑफ एन आई विटनेस डायरेक्ट ओरल एविडेंस समबडी रोड दैट ओरल इज बेटर ओके गुड कंग्रेचुलेशन यू सेड ओरल इज बेटर ओके बट बी स्पेसिफिक ओके समटाइम्स he don't have personal knowledge but by the circumstances he can draw an inference that is known as indirect evidence for example i just enter into a room i see a person is reading newspaper after sometimes i see another person entering with a knife in his hand after sometimes i see the same person who entered with a knife in his hand coming out with a blood stained knife then i go inside the person who is reading newspaper is found dead by stab injury i have not seen the other person stabbing him but i can draw an opinion that the one who entered with a knife must have stabbed him that is indirect evidence okay indirect evidence indirect evidence okay here is evidence means you hear through somebody go and tell it to somebody that's all you don't have personal knowledge and you don't have you cannot draw any inference He goes to the court of law and says that he entered, he attended B's marriage with C. That time he met D. Then he, when you are talking to D, he heard E was telling X that Z has seen Y was stabbing M. That is hearsay evidence. Documentary evidence are two types: the medical certificates and medical legal reports. medical certificate means whatever a patient or anybody requires for a day to day life like sickness certificate fitness certificate physical fitness certificate death certificate vaccination certificate day to day life a person may be required medical legal reports medical legal reports required by law enforcing agencies may be police officer or may be magistrate or judge investigating officer as i said sickness certificate fitness certificate physical fitness certificate vaccination certificate test certificate all these are medical certificate whereas injury certificate examination of the victim of the rape accused of rape victim of sodomy accused of sodomy all these are medical legal the most reliable evidence is as this cadet fusion say direct oral direct oral is best why 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 because they say he can be cross examined he can be cross examined okay Mr A killed Mr B in a park Mr C came to the court of law as prosecution witness saying i saw Mr A with the knife minutes before the incident the evidence given by Mr C helps in the court to prove the crime as already know the answer indirect evidence indirect evidence okay in question There are two types of inquest in India. Majority of the inquest are police inquest, but some time magistrate has to do inquest. There are two types of magistrate. Number one, judicial magistrate who is sitting in a court of law, like chief judicial magistrate, judicial magistrate of first class, judicial magistrate of second class. Ah, number two, executive magistrate. Executive magistrates are usually revenue. authorities like district collector or district commissioner assistant collector or assistant commissioner or even tahsildar or even deputy tahsildar all these are executive magistrate most of the time in case of magistrate inquest executive magistrate will hold inquest but sometime judicial magistrate inquest is compulsory when executive magistrate do inquest as you know very well they do in case of when a married woman commits suicide or she dies under suspicious circumstances within 7 years of marriage or within 7 years after marriage suspecting dowry death okay 
नंबर टू इन केस ऑफ डिस इंटीग्रेशन और सॉरी डिस इंटरमेंट और एग्जीमेशन नॉट डिस इंटीग्रेशन डिस इंटरमेंट नंबर थ्री डेथ कॉस्ट बाय द पोलिस और सस्पेक्टेड टू बी कॉस्ट बाय पोलिस है फॉर एग्जांपल ए पर्सन डाइज ड्यूरिंग पोलिस फायरिंग ए पर्सन डाइज ड्यूरिंग पोलिस लाठी चार्ज A person dies while taking from one police station to the other police station, or police station to the court, or court to the prison, whatever it is. Executive magistrate will hold him. But judicial magistrate ka inquest is compulsory in cases of number one when a person dies, or when a person disappears. Or when a female has been raped in police custody, death in police custody, disappearance from police custody, rape in police custody. Police custody does not mean only in the police station. Police custody means wherever a person has been detained by the officials, maybe by a magistrate, maybe by the court. it may be police custody police lock up or it may be jail or it may be boster school remand home rehabilitation schools or psychiatric hospital if a mentally ill prisoner has admitted in a psychiatric hospital in all these cases judicial magistrate inquest is compulsory a 14 years old female was kidnapped by a person the police arrested him and taken him to the custody where he was found dead on next day the inquest done a judicial magistrate judicial magistrate inquest by judicial magistrate is compulsory many student right death in police custody you are wrong any one of the above any one of the above Yeah, somebody asked what is exhumation exhumation means digging out a body from the grave for the purpose of identification or maybe for the purpose of uh, second post mortem examination or maybe first post mortem itself okay all the following conditions of defenses available to a doctor against allegations of negligence except say medical law and ethics is very very important chapter most of the time students get confused so i thought let me teach you exactly what is the difference between medical malocurrence and therapeutic misadventure all these terms okay now what are the differences in medical negligence let me discuss in detail what are the various differences in medical negligence for a doctor look here sometimes there is no difference at all no defense doctor cannot defend himself at all when when the thing speak for itself called rapes or locator here yes is silent yes pratyu shakhe you are right you are right rape if so locator yes is silent they say i don't know okay now operation on a wrong patient operation on a wrong limb operation on a wrong organ operation on a wrong eye instead of right eye ophthalmology operation on the left eye what defense he can get no defense keeping a surgical instrument or gauze or swab in your abdominal or thoracic cavity after laparotomy or thoracotomy Prescription of an overdose. A patient comes to me. This is a fever. I give tab dolo six hundred mg four dash four dash four dash four into four days. After one day, he comes with hematemesis and collapses in my clinic and dies. All these are examples of rapes or locator. Doctrine of rapes or locator can be applied in case of prescription of an overdose. description of an overdose a patient with previous history of abdominal surgery comes to hospital with abdominal pain and fever x-ray of the abdomen is shown below this corresponds to very easy very easy okay 
Number two, partial defense. Not complete defense, partial defense. When you can defend yourself partially, contributory negligence or concurrent negligence where both doctor and patient are negligent. Both are negligent. Doctor is also negligent. Patient is also negligent. I am a neurologist. I diagnose a patient suffering from epilepsy. Then I give him prescription taffino barbiturin 30 milligram 111 into 30 days. I ask him to come after one month. Perfectly all right. But I was very busy. I just give prescription, but don't tell him about the doses. Don't write about the dose. I just give tap phenobarbital, 30 milligram, 90 tablets. Okay, take these tablets, come after one month. Patient goes to the medical shop, buys 90 tablets, consume all 90 tablets at a time. At a time, 90 tablets and suffer from barbiturate overdose and get admitted to the hospital, get discharged after two weeks or three weeks and sues the doctor. Because of the doctor, I suffered. Now, doctor will tell in the court of law, he defends himself by stating that, yes, your honor, I agree that I was negligent, I didn't mention about the dose. But as per doctor, no common knowledge means common sense. Any patient should have known that no medical doctor would have given 90 tablets to take at a time because I am not a veterinary doctor. If I am a veterinary doctor, if a baby elephant comes with the history of seizures, I would have given 90 tablets or even 100 tablets, but at least she could have called me and asked me about the dose or at least she would have come and visited me. Then if the, magic, the judge thinks, yes, doctor is negligent, patient is also negligent, then it is an example of concurrent negligence. But it is only in civil cases, only in civil negligence, not in criminal negligence. Not in criminal negligence. Okay, remember that. Only in civil cases. Okay. Contributory negligence is a difference in civil malpractice. Civil malpractice means civil negligence. Number three, complete defense. 100% defense for the doctor. When you know the ingredients of medical negligence. The ingredients of medical negligence are duty, dereliction, direct causation, damage, reasonable foreseeability. You tell that, hey, I never treated you. How can you sue me in a court of law? No duty owed. Number two, yes. I treated you, but I treated according to the prevailing standard. I have shown reasonable care and reasonable skill. There is no dereliction. Number three, yes, I gave you injection penicillin without test dose. But did you suffer from any damage? Whether anaphylactic shock has taken place? No. No dummy. Number four, yes, I gave a penicillin injection without test dose. But he died of myocardial infarction, not by anaphylactic shock, even otherwise you would have died. No direct causation. Number five, reasonable foreseeability. No reasonable foreseeability. What injection I gave without test dose is injection paracetamol. Injection paracetamol, normally we don't give test dose. Number six, no one's act as intervening as means new act intervening, new act intervening. The event should be taken place has been intervened by an unforeseen, unexpected new event. What is supposed to go? Some other things are taken. For example, now I am taking class. I am supposed to take class maybe till 8 o'clock or 8.15 or 8.30 or 7.45. My self don't know. Even you don't know. Okay. Suddenly fan falls on my head and I die. What events to be taken place intervened by an unforeseen, unexpected new event. For example, a person takes a knife try to kill a person, but suddenly he defends himself, he sustained an injury to the palm. Some people come running and this assailant also run away. Now he takes one auto rickshaw, go to hospital, take treatment, go back home. That's the events to be taken, please. 
but unfortunately on the way his atarisha meets with an accident and he dies now atarisha accident is new act intervening new act intervening no was actors intervenes okay now the original assailant will not be charged for murder he charged for only causing hurt or grievous said by dangerous weapon but not for murder at the same time imagine a patient comes to the hospital with the uh, redness doctor diagnose cellulitis and ask him for admission he says it requires some three days admission and he starts with penicillin injection without test tubes without test tubes negligence started suddenly person gets anaphylactic shock he start giving anti anaphylactic measures is about to recover meantime dengue outbreak starts in the hospital out of 100 patient 50 patients suffer from dengue including this patient that at last he dies he dies now his wife sues the doctor that sues the doctor that his death is due to negligence of the doctor then doctor says no by my negligence what he got is only anaphylactic shock from which you are recovering death is due to dengue that is new act intervening new act intervening okay new act intervening that is one of the defense that means it breaks the chain of consequences breaks the chain of consequences no was act as intervenes is breaking the chain of consequences number 7 product liability product liability means manufacturer is liable manufacturer is liable So, for example, I give oxygen to the patient, but unfortunately, instead of oxygen, the cylinder contains carbon monoxide, and he dies of carbon monoxide poisoning. I am not held liable because I don't go and smell it before giving it. Whether it's oxygen, even if it is oxygen or carbon dioxide, monoxide, carbon monoxide is odorless. I can't differentiate. Manufacturing lab damage caused by faulty materials is a defense. under products liability products liability corporate negligence means hospital is negligent say for example i am an ophthalmologist i operate uh, cataract operation in the ot patient loses his eye later i come to know that hospital ot has not been fumigated or sterilized properly i am not held responsible the hospital is held liable okay error of judgment error is human human is known to make mistakes i don't think there is any human being who never done any mistake in his life say for example if a female comes with a issue of lump in the breast surgeon feels very hard and he suspect carcinoma breast he asks for fnac from two pathologists both pathologists say it is carcinoma breast she does radical mastectomy later when he send the breast mass for biopsy the pathologist gives the report as fibroadenoma now they sue the female sues the doctor in the court of law surgeon says say surgeon say no i believe the pathologist now the judge may send the slide to three or five renowned pathologist and take their opinion if majority say that no it features are just like carcinoma then the original pathologist may not be liable error of judgment miss adventure totally unforeseen incident unfortunate incident an inadvertent act a mishap an accident that means you never expected such things to happen For example, I have just given a test for the testers of penicillin only patient dies of an amelitic shock, or you give test dose normally, you give full dose, he dies of an amelitic shock. And this misadventure may be during treatment, known as therapeutic misadventure, or it may be during diagnosis, diagnostic, or it may be experimental. For example, angioplasty is a treatment during angioplasty. coronary artery ruptures and it dies or during angiogram coronary artery ruptures or during covid vaccine trial 
person dies. Experimental misadventure. Experimental misadventure. Okay. Experimental misadventure. Am I not getting the messages or you are not sending a messages? I don't know. Death of a patient due to unintentional and inadvertent act is known as therapeutic misadventure. Number 11, medical malocrance. Medical malocrance. What is medical malocrance? Absolutely no negligence by the doctor, but patient has not responded for the treatment. Patient has not responded for the treatment. Oh, okay. Clear. Okay. You said everything is clear. Okay. I just give an example, then you will understand. Look here, a patient comes to me with the issue of cough is sputum. I send the sputum for cultural sensitivity and report comes as it is sensitive for taxi. I give taxi. In spite of giving taxi, person suffer from septicemia and he dies. What way I am negligent? But his wife is not ready to accept the fact that only with the calf person died. Then she is suspi because the doctor my husband died. Only thing I have to maintain proper medical records. That's it. Okay. Calculated risk doctrine. Each and every medical procedure there may be inevitable risk Inevitable risk. For example, even during the amniocentesis, there may be chances of abortion 0 0.1 to 0 0.3%. 1 in 1,000 or 3 in 1,000. But only thing is you have to inform before. Calculate it. Just remember all these are one of the defenses for the doctor. Voluntary non-fit injury means if someone Willingly places himself in a position where harm might result, he cannot claim against other party. I don't know whether you understood or not. Did you understand? Did you understand? Yes or no? Tell me. Did you understand? I just give an example, then you will understand. Okay, you understood. Good. Boxing. After 18 years, a person can give consent to enter into amateur boxing. During boxing, if he dies, other person with other person is relatives cannot claim because he himself has given consent. For medical doctors, example, radiation pulse. Radiation pulse. The only thing is you have to inform and take consent before starting radiation that radiation pulse chances are there. Okay. Number four, re indica. Re indica, law of limitation. In a civil case, time limitation for the party to sue a doctor or any other cases is two years. After the knowledge of the damage, for example, today instead of right eye, he operated on the left eye. From today, two years, I have to sue him. At the same time, doctor has kept a season in my abdomen. I come to know after 10 years, from that time, within 2 years. But not in any criminal cases. Criminal cases. Criminal cases are unlimited. Say today I tell my son, hey son, come here. Do you know how your grandfather died? How? I stabbed him 50 years back, I tell you. I killed him. My son can go to police station, police can come and arrest me. No time limit in criminal cases. Okay. That is Ray. Indica. Doctor can be sued by a patient for civil negligence up to two years. Suit against civil malpractice can be instituted within how many years? Two years. Criminal anytime. Lastly, re judicata means once the case has been settled in a court of law, it cannot be revoked in the same court or same level of the court. He can appeal to the higher court. For example, one district court case is finalized. He cannot go to some other district and put the same case or in the same district, same court. He cannot put another case. He can appeal to the higher court, say high court. Or from high court, he can go to Supreme Court. Okay. Yeah, there is a question. 
do we have to learn all ipc numbers we can focus on important ones mariam fatima don't worry about ipc as of today just yesterday everything is changed now indian penal code has been repeated by bharatiya nyaya samhita previously there are 510 ipc now bns bharatiya nyaya samhita there are only 358 now everything is changed okay I have to study all these uh, new sections and I am going to give a uh, YouTube session, especially on new session, new sections. Okay. There I will tell which is important, which is not important. Okay. For example, section 84 of IPC. Now, it is section 22 of IPC. Okay. Whether a mental ill person liable for punishment or not. Now it is 22, before it is 84. So, so many changes. Murder. Before it was 302, now it is 101. So, changes are there. Okay. Don't worry about all such things. Okay. McNaughton not changed. McNaughton died long back. <laughs> what McNaughton has changed? McNaughton died in 19th century, man. Not now. Okay. A quack injects penicillin after giving test dose, but the patient dies of anaphylactic shock. The quack can depend on the grounds of. Okay. See, McThunder rule is not there in India. Section 84, now section 22 is derived from McThunder's rule. That's all. Okay, now you forget about that. Now I told you, you know, it has been changed. Most probably, they may not ask. Okay. A quack injects penicillin. What is the answer here? Many people may say, therapy, Mr. Man. I remember, quack means quack. He is not a doctor. First question comes, who the hell you to inject penicillin? No defense at all. Remember that. All the following conditions of defense is available to your doctor against allegations of negligence, except medical malocurrence. Yes. Therapy, misadventure. Yes. Error of judgment, yes. Rafe's the locator, no defense at all. No defense at all. One of the following, not a defense in medical negligence. No must act as intervenience, yes. Error of judgment, yes. Contributory negligence, partial negligence. Defense, but partial in civil cases. Rafe's the locator, the thing speak for itself. Okay. Law does not consider the following doctor in a charge of criminal negligence. I told you clearly, contributory negligence is a defense only in civil cases. Only in civil cases. Remember that. Okay. 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 To learn IPC number, doctor, okay, work is an important. I told you, you no, know, see, rarely they ask IPC, not always they ask IPC, like per jury also things, section 84, they used to ask. As of today, you don't bother about also things. Okay. What is that discourse with this? Okay, you don't worry about IPC as of today. Okay, you have not studied as of today, I don't know. Because just yesterday it has come. It takes time for me also to refer everything, the law, everything, something, chain. Okay? Okay. Now, during hysterectomy surgery, there was a damage to the ureter. This is covered under which doctrine? Now, many people started giving answer that it is medical malocurrence. I don't agree. Even many teachers also said that the answer is medical malocurrence or therapeutic misadventure. No! What I say is, it is the duty of the gynecologist or urologist or whoever it is, surgeon, you are not supposed to injure the ureter. You have to separate the ureter and remove the uterus. Okay? So, according to me, it is Ray Ipsa Locator. Ray Ipsa Locator. Okay. Vicarious liability pertains to? What is the answer? Tell me, what do you mean by vicarious liability? Vicarious liability. 
Okay, many people are answering that previous question, answer, therapeutic misadventure. What do you mean by misadventure? Misadventure is totally unfortunate, unforeseen, very never expected. But here, you are not supposed to injure the irritator. I say the thing speak for itself. If you injure the irritator during the hysterectomy, that means you are not competent to do hysterectomy. So it rapes the locator according to me. Okay. Now, here, Already one student has answered D, D, or in the manna D, discadal fusion D, you are wrong. Vicarious liability means not the one who is negligent, some other person is held responsible to pay the compensation in a civil case. Not the one who is negligent. I have done surgery, I showed negligence. But somebody else has to pay the money as compensation. Why? Under the principle of respondeat superior means let the master answer. It comes whenever there is employer-employee relationship. They say that employer is held responsible to pay for employee's negligence. Pay for what? Pay for compensation to the patient. Because... You imagine, you imagine, you have done MBBS with some 30 lakhs loan. Again, you do MS surgery with another 40 lakhs loan. Totally, you are having 70 lakhs loan. You are selling 2 lakhs per month. Tomorrow, you do a negligent act where court asks you to pay 2 crores where from where you can pay. But almost always, employer is richer than employee. That's why law has made employer is held responsible for employee's negligence. Okay. Not somebody is a D. Junior, senior, nothing like that. Why senior is held responsible for junior's uh, unnecessarily negligent act? Or which senior? If you are first year MB, first year uh, resident, second year sir, you are senior. Third year are senior, lecturers are senior, assistant professor senior, professor, HOD, everybody is senior. What? All are responsible or what? No. Okay. For example, here you see employer, hospital. Hospital owner is the employer. She has appointed so many employees, right? From sweeper, security guard to the chief cardiac surgeon, all are employees. Negligence by any one of them, any one of them. Employer is responsible to pay the damages. Damages means compensation. Damages means compensation. And employee is responsible for criminal liability. To go to jail, not the employer. The one who was actually negligent should be imprisoned. In case of imprisonment is passed. That is vicarious liability. You understood. Law does not consider following a charge of criminal negligence. Vicarious liability is only for civil suits. Civil suits. Respondent superior pertains to same. Vicarious and respondent both are same. Vicarious responsibility under the principle of respondent superior. Hospital's contribution towards patient damage. Means hospital has to pay for patient damage. Damage means harm. Damages means Compensation. Okay. Why care liability? Hospital's contribution. Which of the following is the disciplinary action for professional misconduct? Okay. Give me the answer fast. A, B, C, D. What is your answer? Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me fast. Tell me fast. Don't take so much time. You are not answering only. None of you are answering. Okay, then I stop asking question. Why? Or I am not getting the answers. I don't know. What happened?
don't know anyway let me continue warning notice means what warning notice is the code of conduct which is prescribed by the medical council maybe state medical council or national medical commission which is issued to all the doctors at the time of registration as a doctor what you are supposed to do what you are not supposed to do the guidelines for a doctor is known as warning notice remember very well warning notice is no way related to disciplinary action or punishment no way related to anything okay no way related to anything okay remember that what are the discipline action taken by state medical council or even national medical commission now they can take three action number 1 warning so now make it a point warning notice is not a discipline action warning is a notice say for example a doctor has put a huge sign board in front of his clinic then somebody lodges a complaint then medical council may say look doctor you have put such a huge sign board in front of your clinic immediately remove that otherwise we are going to take stringent action that is warning number 2 monetary penalty maybe 10000 rupees 1 lakh rupees 2 lakh rupees i don't know number 3 removal of his name from the medical register which may be temporary or permanent the permanent erasure is also known as professional death sentence professional test centers now if the patient is not if the doctor is not happy with the action taken he can appeal to the ethics and registration board medical ethics and registration board first appeal again if he is not happy he can appeal to national medical commission national medical commission okay anyway any time doctor or anybody in india can also i have always appeal to high court or supreme court high court or supreme court okay a doctor can appeal against different action take to smc to national medical commission which one of the following the different action for professional misconduct imprisonment penal erasure warning notice i told you clearly warning notice is not the answer penal erasure is the answer here penal erasure is the answer okay now which of the following the different action for professional misconduct penal erasure warning notice answer is penal erasure why again students are giving answer for the previous question or this question i don't understand okay anyway i explain to you properly warning is issued to a medical regime medical practitioner for warning is a discipline action for unethical practice unethical practice okay warning notice is issued for none of the abuse issued to each and everybody each and everybody it is issued to each and everybody so none of the abuse. hope you got proper concept which of the following can be discipline action for professional misconduct answer may be penal erasure as well as warning penal erasure as well as warning okay so answer is both both dactylography that is one very very important question dactylography is the best method of identification as of today also known as galton system the ridge pattern appears at 12 to 16 weeks of intrauterine life appears at 12 to 16 weeks of intrauterine life and the formation completes by 24 weeks of intrauterine life 24 weeks of intrauterine life okay that is regarding fingerprint one important question in case of death is unknown even after detailed examination investigation it is known as whether it is negative autopsy or obscure autopsy or maybe obscure maybe negative don't know okay okay many of you have answered as b let me tell the difference 
negative autopsy about 2 to 5 percent of total autopsies are negative negative autopsy me even after complete external and internal examination histopathological examination and visceral analysis absolutely no findings so opinion as to the cause of death cannot be given no opinion no no how we write that is negative autopsy why maybe because of functional failure functional failure for example person jumps into water water trickles the larynx and he dies of laryngeal spasm you don't find anything on postmortem or person dies of vagal inhibition that is negative autopsy negative autopsy okay understood what is obscure autopsy look here negative autopsy means absolutely no findings obscure autopsy means before that there is a question death represents functional failure of a tissue or organ functional failure of a tissue or organ okay obscure autopsy means there are minimal findings and these findings are not clear cut but cannot correlate with the cause of death even after external internal examination histopathological examination and chemical analysis both are same opinion cannot be given in both but in negative no findings at all here minimal findings that is the difference i hope you understood okay now i receive a dead body to my mortuary i open the cloth i see the skin absolutely no finding open absolutely no finding send the visa for chemical analysis as well as histological examination no finding negative autopsy meantime in the same case imagine there is an aberration over the right upper abdominal wall 10 into 5 cm graze aberration with history of rotary accident i suspect that he must have died due to rotary accident but after opening absolutely no findings i just can't say that it is negative autopsy because there is presence of aberration meantime i cannot say that he died due to an aberration because it is not sufficient to call death of a person now i say that it is obscure autopsy so now in an autopsy if there is no findings even after detailed examination investigation it is known as what is your answer now negative autopsy there are no findings even after detail no findings negative there are minimal findings obscure minimal findings obscure cause of death is unknown they are not mentioned about the finding so a or b a or b okay you understood now whether it is the mistake of some book authors or mistake of the teachers i don't know most of the teachers what you have seen they are teaching wrongly regarding incision again you may say that i am a megalomaniac why have to say whatever i teach is right others are teaching wrong i may be wrong and others are right you may say so but you only decide i shape incision symphysis menta yok sorry i'm sorry i shaved incision most common and routine incision which extends from symphysis menta to symphysis pubis avoiding the umbilicus most common absolutely no controversy in this question okay no controversy number two why shaved incision extending from both the mastoids down to sternal mart avoiding the umbilicus to pubic symphysis it is done in neck injuries and asphyxial deaths by compression over the neck because i shave he can't open the neck properly this this triangular flap he can lift and rip neck is open why shape is okay avoiding the umbilicus you understood 
मोडिफाइड वॉइस शेप इंसिशन बोथ एंटी रेक्सिलर फोल्डर अक्रोमियन रनिंग अवे फ्रॉम बिलो द अवे एंड बिलो द ब्रेस्ट टू रीच द एक्सिपिस्टर्नम अवार्डिंग द अम्बिलिकस सो इन केस ऑफ मेल डेड बॉडीज इफ यू क्लोज द फर्स्ट बटन द इंसिशन विल बी विल नॉट बी सीन But if females in India, the sari blouse or salwar kameez, the incision is seen to avoid that. They say modified Y shape incision. Okay. Now we know the difference between Y shape and modified Y shape. But controversy is some books say same thing. Some teachers say Y for modified Y, modified Y for Y. My simple question is number one: Who will write Y like this? Who will write Y like this? If you put on center line, it looks like Lord Shiva's Trishul. Anybody will write why like this? Why? Now you may ask, how can I say so? I can say so because there is one beautiful book in Indian authorization by Krishan, which he also mentioned what I said. Same thing he has mentioned. Why shaved incision? In the third method, the two incision comes on either side of the neck, two three three millimeter lobe of each ear. Maribrana sternum, then continue to sink with this. Correctly, yes. Modified Y also he has mentioned. So proper book reference is there. One of the fantastic book, Christian which. Number one foreign textbook, Bernard Knight. He also mentioned clearly. He also mentioned clearly. Okay. He also mentioned clearly. What is Y shape incision? And he wrote that in hanging strangulation, it is there. So I always teach like this: X shape incision is suspected torture. Wrist down, 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 down. Back also same. You are removing the skin of the entire body. Done is suspected torture. For example, look here. Absolutely no injury, but once you open, you can see multiple contusions. Multiple contusions. Okay. Now, the incision preferred during autopsy in case of asphyxia, death due to neck compression is. My answer is Y-shaped incision. Y-shaped incision. Okay. Y-shaped incision. Another controversy again. People created again the authors as well as this one that is because of the ignorance of English. Let me tell you. Young block removal of autopsy is called. Majority of the people say Gons technique. That is wrong. Young block is lettuce. Let me tell. What are the different techniques of autopsy? Number one, lettuce technique, also known as young mass or young block. Now, many people are teaching that Gons is young block. First, you see, you open your Google and see what is the meaning of young mass and what is the meaning of young block. Young block means all together. You know, some book mention young block spelling also young b l o c k. Wrong. It is b l o c. Young block means all together or all at the same time. See, Bernard Knight again. He says clearly that young block by mod mo modified Rokitansky technique more accurately described as lettuce method. Young block is lettuce, not gauze. Told by even Bernard Knight because he knows English very well. But Indians, you know, the their English is better than Indians. Indians, some people are good, like Sachin Taru, that is different. Okay. <clears throat> Now, oral, cervical, thoracic, abdominal, pelvic, tongue to rectum, everything has a large single organ block, which is known as lettuce technique. Lettuce technique. Everything has a single large organ block. So, end mass removal at autopsy is called lettuce technique. Lettuce technique. It is commonly done in medical colleges to teach students, PG and UG students. Okay, PG and UG students. Number two, gons. Gons means block by block. This block by block dissection, people confuse it with end block without knowing the meaning of end block. Cervical and thoracic organs, abdominal organs, and the urogenital system are removed as separate organ blocks. 
say for example, I want one hepatobiliary block. I want urogenital block. Whichever system you want, you remove as a block. That is block by block dissection. Respiratory system as one block if you want. You understood. So, N block is different. Block by block is different. In Gauss technique of postmortem, cervical thoracic all taken as individual blocks. Block by block dissection is Gauss technique. N block dissection means look here. Let you stick. Which among the following N block method used at autopsy? Let tubes. Let tubes. Number three, workhorse. Workhorse means organ by organ removal. Most common in India. Just remove right kidney, left kidney, liver, pancreas, intestine, one by one you remove. So, workhorse technique, organs are removed one by one. The most common autopsy technique in India is workhorse. Workhorse. Rookie task technique. If you suspect some infection or known infected cases, you don't want to expose your body. So, you just open the cavity. Just outside you look, which are very, very important. That piece only you remove. That is rookie task technique. Rookie task technique. Okay. Understood. No confusion. Rookie task technique. In situ dissection is done. Now, which is correctly matched? Correctly matched is Rokitansky is in situ. That is correct. Gons N block. Wrong. You can remember, don't worry. Just change the spelling. V O R I G B L A. V workos O organ by organ. R Rokitansky I in situ. G Gons B block by block. L lettuce E N mass or N block. Okay. N block removal at autopsy is called lettuce stick. Lettuce stick. A patient of multi drug resistant TB dies of respiratory failure due to low bar pneumonia. Which of the following options is the most appropriate for line 1 A of death certificate? 1 A means immediate cause of death. What is your answer? I just want to know your answer. Okay. Okay. Respiratory failure. Somebody answered. Look here. This is the format of medical certification of cause of death, MCCD. Immediate cause under Roman 1A. Immediate cause is always 1, that is 1A. What has given rise to 1A is antecedent cause. And the antecedent cause may be B or B and C or B, C and D or B, C, D, E, any number. A is due to 1A is due to 1B. 1B is due to 1C. 1C is due to 1D. Remember that. If at all a person is always uh, also suffering from some other condition, that you should put under Roman 2. Roman 2. Okay. Now we see there are generation of four people here. Four people. First one is the small baby. I consider her as 1A. One year is due to what? She is due to her mother. Mother I consider as 1B. Her mother is due to her grandmother. Grandmother I consider as 1C. Her grandmother is due to her great-grandmother. That I consider as 1D. So what comes last should be the first in the death certificate. What comes first should be the last in the death certificate. You remember that. Number two. Remember. Never ever write respiratory failure, cardiac failure, cardiorespiratory failure as cause of death because eventually everybody's heart and lungs fails. Never ever write like that. You have to write actual diagnosis as a cause of death. Okay. Okay. Now, look here. 
a person died of septicemia due to peritoneal as a result. What is 1A? What comes last? Septicemia. Patient died due to septicemia due to peritonitis, due to perforation of duodenal ulcer, due to chronic duodenal ulcer. You understood now? I hope you got a proper concept. Child died to lower pneumonia as a result of measles. Immediate cause lower pneumonia as a result of measles. A person died of MI as a result of coronary occlusion as a consequence of atherosclerosis. Immediate cause of death is myocardial infarction due to coronary occlusion as a result of atherosclerosis. You understand? Easy, no? No confusion. Okay. Easy. Yes or no? You have to say yes. Okay. Very easy. Here, the answer is originally patients suffer from squamous cell carcinoma, from squamous cell carcinoma, serenotostasis, then metastatic ruptured, you intracranial hemorrhage, intracranial hemorrhage, give rise to unconsciousness that precipitated bronchopneumonia. Bronchopneumonia. 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. Okay. Very simple. Okay. A patient of drug resistant TB dies of respiratory failure. So, here the answer is low bar pneumonia, never right respiratory failure. A 23-year male patient was brought to the hospital with history of stow burst, burns involving the burns, burns sometimes they ask in the examination. But here only thing you have to know some changes like in adults, percentage of body surface area burn is calculated by Valle's rule or rule of 9. All of you know 9, head and neck 9. Each upper limb 9-9, nine, nine, front of the chest 9, back of the chest 9, front of the abdomen 9, back of the abdomen 9, front of the right lower limb 9, left lower limb 9, back of the right and left line 9 and perineum 1. Okay. But here you should know, head 7, neck 2, totally 9. And your arm 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2. Lower limb, 10, 5, 3. 10, 5, 3. Easy to remember. If one entire thigh is burnt, 10 percent. Okay. Lund and Bowder chart is the best in both adults and children. This chart is best, but very difficult to remember. Okay. If it all the question asks, which is the best to Estimate the body surface area burn, then your answer should be Lund and Brown chart. Now, come back to this question. Face, head, neck, 3 including 9. Both arms, I said both arms, 4 plus 4, 8. 9 plus 8, 17. Front of the chest, 9. 17 plus 9, 26. 26. Got it? Is what is the core body temperature in case of heat stroke? Different books give differently, so I want to clarify. As per Harrison, heat stroke forty point five degrees centigrade. You remember two points here. Number one, body core temperature is forty point five degrees centigrade in heat stroke. Number two. Sweating is absent in his stroke. Absence. There is no sweating in his stroke. No sweating in his stroke. Remember that. Okay. Sweating is absent in his stroke. Okay. Spanish windlass technique is also known as a type of what is Bans Dola? Boss Dola, you know very well, take two bamboo sticks or any other similar sticks, tie at one end, keep the neck in between and compress the neck. Boss Dola. 
must all of us use your bombus originally but you can use anything okay at least send some messages man so that i am aware that you are listening otherwise i will not be knowing whether you are listening or not whether sound is coming or not i don't understand anything okay okay mugging strangulation by the bend of the elbow or bend of the knee also known as arm lock or choke hold arm lock or choke hold i'm not getting any messages at all okay marking is combination of smothering and traumatic asphyxia smothering and traumatic asphyxia maybe by one person or two people one person sit on the chest traumatic asphyxia other person close the mouth and nostril or same person can sit down okay garroting garroting me a victim is strangled from behind without warning without warning yeah now i started getting the messages usually by ligature strictly speaking you may if you go and uh, mugging uh, go for mugging from behind without his knowledge that is also one may garrote but usually by a ligature garrote okay spanish wind loss technique it was a method of judicial execution in spain and turkey before now it is not practiced where the person is made to sit on a wooden chair or whatever it is a metal strap is covered around the neck and tightened from behind they say it is a method of garroting strictly speaking it is not as per the definition but they say it is a method of garroting okay spanish wind loss technique spanish wind loss technique is also known as a type of garroting garroting okay a person is brought dead to the mortuary history revealed that he collapsed okay i want your answer for this question he collapsed while having dinner on examination there was cyanosis pitical hemorrhages and a bolus of food in the larynx blood alcohol level was 120 mg per cent what is the probable cause of death what is the answer tell me you have to tell me fox i was supposed to finish by before 8 but now i doubt about 8 okay doubt about it cafe coronary again okay i remember your name pratyusha i ask you again okay i again ask you okay cafe coronary all of you know sudden and unexpected death of a healthy person during a meal this point is very important absolutely no signs of respiratory distress or any clinical classical signs of asphyxia no classical signs of asphyxia that is very very important point pratyush cho you understood okay it is normally seen in intoxicated people normally when our food enters into your larynx you cough it out because of gag reflex but intoxicated people gag reflex is inhibited bolus of food enters into larynx which stimulate laryngeal nerve endings which is supplied by vagus vagus is cardio inhibitory and the person dies of cardiac arrest that is cafe coronary cafe coronary you understood all of you know but only one thing you should remember here is that there are no signs of respiratory distress whereas in case of choking there is signs of asphyxia signs of asphyxia in case of choking cafe coronary is associated with intoxication cause of death is vagal stimulation cause of death is cardiac arrest now come back pratyusha what is your answer okay pratyush is not answering where she is? 
by my loud voice you must run away ye choki good girl okay keep it up not associated with salt water drowning is now you should know what are the difference between salt water drowning and fresh water drowning what is the cause of death in case of drowning whether it is salt water drowning or fresh water drowning there will be disruption of pulmonary surfactant disruption of pulmonary surfactant okay now come to the difference whether it is fresh water or salt water what mechanism takes place is osmosis osmosis means water goes from lower concentration to higher concentration now if the person falls into water say fresh water water enters into lungs from lungs it enters into blood because blood salinity is more than fresh water that give rise to hemodilution once there is hemodilution rbcs will be swollen and it breaks hemolysis rbc contain potassium it give rise to hyperkalemia hyperkalemia give rise to ventricular fibrillation and person dies in about 5 minutes there is dilutional hyponatremia dilutional hyponatremia but even if there is dilution hyperkalemia remember hemolysis and hyperkalemia salt water exactly opposite water from the blood enters into lungs go for hemo concentration once the hemo concentration it give rise to hypernatremia because volume become less sodium will be same but because volume is less it go for hypernatremia that give rise to bradycardia and cardiac arrest. percent dies are more double than salt water or double than fresh water now we you know the mechanism exactly okay shall i continue even if you say no i have to continue hyperkalemia is normally associated with fresh water drowning cause of death in fresh water drowning is don't be under impression that why i am going so deep not deep deep pool in case of drowning dilutional hyponatremia yes hemo dilution yes decrease potassium wrong disruption of pulmonary surfactant arrhythmia ventricular fibrillation answer 1 2 4 okay which of the following are features of salt water drowning salt water drowning hyponatremia wrong hypernatremia yes hemo concentration yes hyperkalemia wrong cardiac arrhythmia wrong got it now you people must have become expert in drowning answer is hemolysis okay in case of kleptomania whether is liable or not tell me what is your answer in kleptomania whether the person is liable criminal liable or not remember here only i tell you in india there is nothing like partial liability or diminished responsibility india follow all or none phenomena whether the person is liable or not liable that's all okay okay what is the answer partial responsible somebody wrote tarsha kumar partially pratyush wrote again pratyush ke wrote only criminally responsible okay section 84 ipc now section 22 of bns derived from macnutt's rule which deals with criminal responsibility of a mentally ill person okay now to say whether the person is liable or not three conditions are required three criteria number 
that should be mental illness see previously they used the word unsoundness of mind but now bns say mental illness person with mental illness number 2 you should not know the nature of the act number 3 you should not know whether it is right or wrong right or wrong why people are only bothered about mac 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 norton also things mac norton is different here question is different question okay mariam fatima and you tell me whether the person is criminally liable or not you just tell yes or no that's all you are not at all bothered about the mac norton mac norton is no more since more than 150 years okay tell me now if in the exam they ask any mental condition or any physical condition and ask you whether he is liable or not you should ask question put two questions on that condition two questions on that conditions okay okay mariam said he is not liable now again i ask you a second question first question now mariam you just think whether he know kleptomaniac does he know what is he doing yes or no does he know or no tell me answer may be no or yes if answer is no he is not lab but in kleptomania he knows very well what is he doing if he knows what he is doing then ask second question does you know what you are doing right or wrong if he does not know what he is not knowing he is not liable if he knows yes he is liable simple now mariya patima i don't know you are answering like this kleptomaniac knows very well what is he doing he knows very well what he is doing is wrong in spite of that he is doing out of impulse so he is liable understood kleptomania person is liable okay delirium acute confusion state because of clouding of consciousness he does not know what he is doing not liable automatism conscious performance of an act of which he is unaware over which he does not have conscious control not liable epilepsy epileptic aura he will not be knowing what he is doing not liable somnambulism sleep walking here it depends if it is diagnosed today at first offense he is not liable but what law says is once you what maria we are not answering only at last you understood about kleptomania or not okay once you come to know that you are suffering from somnambulism it is your duty to see that you will not repeat the same so you have to take proper precautions hypnosis both are liable hypnotizer and hypnotized both are liable you know why nobody can be hypnotized without their consent once you give consent whatever the criminal act you have done you are held liable according to law remember that remember that amit raj anand you said no what no you tell me what for no tell me hey in case of kleptomania he is not responsible for the act section 84 ipc is wrong whether ipc is there or not that is secondary 84 or 22 now the question is kleptomaniac knows very well what he is doing and he knows very well what he is doing is wrong so he is held liable he is held liable finish that discussion is over whether you answer or not i don't know okay okay now coming to the caustic or corrosives acids and alkalis acids and alkalis acids cause coagulative necrosis coagulative necrosis all acid cause coagulative necrosis except hydrofluoric acid that is very very important that is very very important okay whereas alkalis cause liquefactive necrosis okay now i got the answers from you what amitraj 
DDD, McNaughton is not liable. Yes, he knows. Lucid interval. Yes, sir. Thank you. Consent. For, uh, okay. What uh, discard fusion? What consent? Okay, consent regarding hypnosis. Okay. Alkali, liquefactor necrosis, including hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is very, very important. Remember. In caustics or corrosives, there is no singeing, no red line, no blisters. All books mention like that, but recently I found in a journal, formic acid can give blisters. Formic acids can give blisters. Okay. Okay. Which acid does not show coagulative necrosis on contact? Answer is HF. True for acids, no red line, no singeing, no vesicle generally. So, answer is all the above. A man throws sulfuric acid, which is not expected. Blisters. Blisters are not expected. Okay. Hydrofluoric acid. There is severe throbbing pain with tissue destruction and necrosis. Because of liquefactor necrosis, it invades deep. Look at this picture. Okay, look at this picture. Tissue destruction and necrosis. Okay. Acidosis. Hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hyperkalemia. Hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia. Treatment of choice is calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate. Okay. Sir, explain the previous question. Which question you want regarding sulfuric acid? See, in the previous question, what is shown is a man throws sulfuric acid on the face after a fight following which he comes to the emergency for supportive management. All the statements are true about chemical burns except blisters are present. I told you, you know, for acids and uh, acids, there is no blister formation. That is the answer. Finished. You understood? Ulcerated patches present, yes. Absence of singeing of hair, yes. Cogly necrosis, of course, sir. Okay. Not seen in hydrofluoric acid. Causes immediate severe burn, yes. Pain is mild even in severe burn, no. Gas and gluconate antidote causes progressive tissue destruction, yes. Okay. Which of the following burn is best treated with calcium gluconate, hydrofluoric acid? All the following are also with burns of hydrofluoric acid except. Got it? Cool. K. Okay. okay. If a snake bites you, what will you do, man? Tell me. It is a practical question. Uh, if a snake bite you, what will you do? <laughs> Many people die of fright. Hey, I'm going to die. They die. You are wrong. What you have to do is, you be very cool. Don't care. Be cool. It does not mean that you have to take a cooling glass and wear and say that I'm cool, cool, cool. Not so cool. But mentally be cool. That's all. Okay. Once it is bitten, bitten, what you can do? Nothing. Only thing you have to call your closest friend. Closest friend means not close by heart. Close. Geographically close. So that you can call him and ask him to come and take you. Okay. First aid treatment. First aid treatment. Okay. Best is immobilization. Maybe using a splint. You can use a splint and go for immobilization. Okay. Immobilization. 
assurance and reassurance all the books say reassurance but i say first you have to give assurance then only reassurance if you are assuring second time then it is known as reassurance okay do not wash the area of the bite don't wash according to indian guidelines don't wash no tourniquet application don't apply in a tourniquet but you can go for soother land wrapping soother land wrapping using crepe bandage but not very tight you should pass one finger underneath the crepe bandage but what they say is if you can it can be applied maximum up to 3 hours strictly speaking what they say if you are reaching the hospital within 30 minutes no need to apply more than 30 minutes up to 3 hours you can apply crepe bandage what they say okay okay no incision and suction otherwise some people go for a cruciate cut mm -hmm. don't do that no ice application it may give rise to vascular constriction and gangrenous changes later no ice application just watch the snake of course that time you remove the pulling glass otherwise all the snakes may look black for you and most of the time the snake bites are nocturnal in the night again in the night if you wear pulling glass you don't see the snake only especially black colored snakes anyway you have mobile now take the mobile and take one photo with the flash if it is in the night if you have two mobiles take two photos one from the front and one from the back simultaneously it is up to you okay just to note down the snake so that you can tell the doctor about the features of the snake go away from the snake don't follow the snake don't run don't run don't run because immobilization is very very important if at all you are having any tight leggings or tight jeans cut it but you cut it only if you are away from home if you are at in the home vicinity of the home if snake bites don't cut it don't waste your pant or leggings just go inside remove that and wear a loose one and go okay if at all you are having any anklets or anything remove that remove that don't take revenge by biting it back hey bloody you have bitten me i want to bite you back don't do that innocent animal don't know someone bitten don't bite it back okay don't bite it back no biting back i am going to die before my death i am going to kill you don't do that don't try to do that okay don't try to catch the snake some bird sometimes you may think that you have to go and show that to the or doctor okay don't do that don't do that which of the pre hospital measure is more acceptable in case of snake bite application of splint is the best application of the splint is best hospital treatment wait and watch wait and watch for the signs and symptoms if there is ptosis in case of neurotoxic snakes or 20 wbct is increased clotting time is increased in case of viper start polyvalent anti snake venom with 10 vials which is effective against common cobra common crait russell viper and saw skilled viper four most common drugs they say big four i don't know what big four and all they say okay important point is polyvalent anti snake venom produced by hofkin biopharmaceutical company neutralizes the venom of pit viper due to para specific activity this is an important point note it down i will show you the question then you will understand okay if indicated 
PS we should be started with 10 vials. Another important point. Elapids are neurotoxic. Elapids are common cobra and common crate. Okay. <coughs> in case of common cobra, the neurotoxins are fixed in post-synaptic region. Whereas common crate, it is fixed in the pre-synaptic region. That's why neostigmin should be given only in case of common cobra. No need in case of common crate. Okay. Okay. Neostigmin is indicated in case of poisoning by common cobra. Okay. FMG 2020 August. Easy question. The man was admitted in the hospital with the early reach of snake bite and showed the signs are shown in the picture below. The picture you can see the ptosis and a common crate. And if at all you want to see all the images in forensic medicine, you can go through my Telegram channel. I have a Telegram group, Forensic JP. Telegram channel, Forensic Underline JP. In Forensic Underline JP, all around 250 images of forensic medicine are there with explanation. Okay, you can go through that. Don't worry. Respiratory paralysis. Remember one more important point. In case of common trait, many times there may not be any frank marks, even scratch marks at all. Sometimes only scratch marks may be there. Sometimes nothing will be there. Okay. See, as per the HD's friend saw him lying on the ground and they took the picture of a snake. Okay. False statement is PSV may be given in pit viper. Yes, Hopkins, I said. Cobra venom is neurotoxic. Yes. Atropin pre-medication should be used before administering neostigmine. Yes. Neostigmine has a role in crate bite. Wrong. Neostigmine, no role. Okay. Okay. Which is true about ASV. Lower dose in infant as compared to adults. Wrong. PAS we are giving to neutralize the venom. Whether weight of the child is less or more, that is secondary. No need to give sensitivity a test dose. You have to keep adrenaline, steroid, everything ready. If reaction starts, give anti-anaphylactic measures. Life saving is very, very important. Useful for venom, coagulate wipers. True. Common crate venom causes both external and internal ophthalmoplegia. True. Cobra venom acts as presynaptic region. Wrong. Okay. Okay. Twelve year old bay boy had an alleged issue of snake bite and present to the hospital with inability to open the eye well and difficult in breathing. Neurotoxic poison. He is very anxious and having taken card and taken me on exam. A bite mark cannot be visualized. That means common crate. I told you, you know, one point. Many times there will not be bite mark. No swelling, ptosis. Now, snake is common crate. Don't give anti-snake venom, but observe the patient. Madness. No, you have to give. Give yes, we are nervous to mean and observe the patient. Common, co common cobra you have to give. Neostic me, not in common crate. Reassure the patient, send home. What send home? Hmm. Give yes, we and keep the patient on observation. Correct. Okay. First aid and hospital management for snake bite envenomination is kill the snake, immobilization. Wash the wound, incision and suction, application of tourniquet, admission of ASV. Easy question. Easy question. First statement regarding snake bite is ASV is mainstay. Correct. New Shiva mentally support may be given with ASV in cobra, cobra bite. Yes. Indian polyvalent anti snake venom is not effective against hump nosed viper. True. 
ASV, neostigmine, atropin. Neostigmine is not given in case of great bite. Okay. Now coming to the agricultural poison, because uh, most of the time they start asking about 4-5 poisons like Organophosphoric compounds are irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors. Irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors. Okay. Now look at the question. Irreversible competitive inhibition. There are two types of cholinesterase. True cholinesterase which is present in the RBC pseudo in the plasma. Estimation of true cholinesterase is more specific but difficult to assay. Whereas pseudocholinesterase is easy to assay, more sensitive and more commonly done. More commonly done. Five questions can be asked in this. Okay. Five questions can be asked. Okay. I was supposed to be told to take Three hours, is it okay if I go a bit more or no? Tell me. Because I have to take your consent. Maybe first some five, ten minutes got lost because of some technical problem. Okay. Anyways, you just tell me whether I can go beyond eight o'clock or not. Okay. But clinical effects are due to inhibition of RBC cholinesterase. RBC cholinesterase. Okay, remember these six, seven points. More specific test for organophosphorus poisoning is RBC cholinesterase. RBC cholinesterase. More sensitive test, plasma cholinesterase. Plasma cholinesterase. Okay. We are here. What you are writing? Complete everything. <laughs> I can, how can I complete everything, man? To complete everything, you have to come to me. Then I will complete everything. Okay. Most commonly done test for OP poisoning is plasma cholinesterase level. Clinical effects are due to RBC cholinesterase. OP Increases the secretion of all the glands. Remember, exactly opposite with Datura. Datura decreases the secretion of all the glands. OP increases the secretion of all the glands. There is increase of the secretion of the bronchial tree. You use your common sense. When the secretion of the bronchial tree increases, what happens? There is wheezing, which mimics asthma. Increase lacrimation. Normally people cry when they are emotionally or physically hurt. Here, just like that, water comes out known as crocodile tears. Crocodile tears. Sometimes, tears may be red in color. Red in color. Known as chromogenic tears. Chromogenic tears. Increase urination. Give rise to incontinence of urine. Incontinence of urine. Okay. Asthma like symptoms are seen in organ of phosphorus. Chromolacriuria is rarely seen in organ of phosphates. Acute toxicity of organ of phosphate causes urine incontinence. There is muscarinic effect and nicotinic effect. The muscarinic effect give rise to bradycardia. And hypotension. Whereas nicotinic effects give rise to opposite tachycardia and hypertension. But remember, always, almost always, muscarinic effects predominates over nicotinic effects. There will be fasciculations, twitching of the muscle fibers, salivation, sweating. Increase in all the secretions. Lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastrointestinal cramping and emesis. All of you know about organ of phosphorus. It comes under medicine also. And also it gives rise to garlicky order 
or kerosene order because kerosene is used as solvent for organs of phosphorus. Increase in the secretion of all the glands. All our features of organ phosphorus poisoning except dilated pupil. Which is not a feature of organ phosphorus poisoning. Tichycardia. Remember, underline that. There you see bradycardia, not tachycardia. A farmer is presented with amari pinpoint people increase secretion and urination. Answer is it asked in FMG December 19, organ of phosphate. Normally for FMG exam, they always ask from cocaine, tathura, organ of phosphorus. Pinpoint people and physical issue. Once you see physical issue, immediately your answer should be organ of phosphorus. Organ of phosphorus. Chronic toxicity give rise to neuropsychiatric manifestation. Neuropsychiatric manifestation, they use it as spray, for, as a pesticide for arachnid trees, etc. Cause of death is always respiratory paralysis. Specific treatment is not oxygen. Specific treatment is atropin. Atropin. Role of oxygen is controversial. Controversial. Some authorities say that it does not help at all. But even today, everywhere, doctors are giving that. What is the indication for stoppage of atropin? Atropin is stoppage when the tracheobronchial tree is cleared. Atropin should not be given in case of cyanosis. It is contraindicated in case of cyanosis due to the danger of ventricular fibrillation. Due to the danger of ventricular fibrillation. Okay. Okay. Understood. Cause of death in OP poisoning is respiratory failure. Specific treatment is atropine. A farmer was brought with pinpoint people, increased secretions and garlic order, atropine. Atropine is stopped in OP poisoning when tracheobronchial tree is cleared. Sinus patient come, atropine should not be given. The reason is due to the danger of Ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation. Okay. Number two, carbamates. Another agricultural poison. Important trade name is Bagon. Carbamates are reversible cholinesterase inhibitors. Reversible. Antidote is only atropine. Oxime should not be given at all because it is reversible cholinesterase. If you give cholinesterase regenerators like oxime, you go for cholinesterase crisis. That's why should not be given. Carbamate does not cross the blood brain barrier, so CNA toxicity is less in case of carbamates. Okay. Mechanism action of carbamate poisoning is reversible carbamylation. Whereas irreversible phosphorylation is organophosphorus. Organophosphorus. In carbamate poisoning, all the following should be administered except oxides should not be given. Number three, organochlorine compounds. There is most important trade name what you have to remember is gamaxane and endrin. Gamaxin and Endrin, DDT is outdated now. Gamaxin and Endrin. Endrin is known as plant penicillin because it is widely used all over the world as pesticide. So it is known as plant penicillin. No specific antidote. No specific antidote. Okay. Atropine is not given in which poisoning? Endrin. No specific antidote. Plant penicillin is Endrin. The antidote used in case of poisoning with gamaxin is none of the above. There is no antidote. Now, commit to the datura. Datura, a delirium poison. Active principles are hyosin. 
at the same time delirium drunken gait all this you know that very well carphologia means pulling out imaginary threads from the fingertips nothing will be there it just takes out and throw or picking imaginary objects nothing will be there it just picks I told action is opposite to organ of phosphorus suppression the excretion of all the glands. It does not mean that he should give the tura as antidote for organ of phosphorus or vice versa. It is also known as road poison because when you go for a long journey in a train or bus, some people make friendship. They offer you some vegetables, etc. They give pan containing the tura seeds. Once you consume it, you may become delirious, comatose, and they rob everything from you. So it is known as road poison or rail poison sometimes. Dryness of the mouth, dilated people, delirium are symptoms of the tura poison. Carphologia is seen in poisoning by the tura. Imagine threads are pulled out in the tura. Picking the major objects are seen in the tura. A 35 year old comes casually to consumption of some unknown seed, dilated people, dry mouth, and decreased secretion. FMG June 21, Tatura. Dry mouth, hot skin, railway platform, talking irrelevant, dilated people, staggering gait, slurred speech, all goes in favor of Tatura. Okay, easy. Questions are easy. And you don't. Vice of stigma or neo stigma. Or pilocarpin, anyone can be given. Anyone, and it don't any of the above. A child consumes some unknown fruit, started symptoms, irritability, restlessness, confusion, inability to pass urine, dysuria, hot skin, dry hot skin, photophobia, dilated people. The tura and physostig, the tura and physostig. Okay. Finally, coming to the cocaine, white powder known as white lady. Cocaine is also a delirium poison. Method of drug abuse is snorting. You take a note around, put deep into the nose. That is known as snorting. Crack means adding baking soda. With cocaine, with water, and they dry it. Then they put it into cigarettes. Cigarettes. It is smokable form of cocaine. Smokable form of cocaine is known as coke crack. Because of snorting, it causes nasal septal ulceration and perforation. Even it can cause perforation of the palate. Perforation of palate. Tongue becomes black, 
teeth becomes black, black tongue and black teeth. Black tongue and teeth are subtle perforation seen in cocaine poisoning. Bruxism, grinding of the teeth, grinding of the teeth. While smoking this crack, you get the crackled sound, the burning crack may jump and fall over the cornea and it may give rise to corneal defects. Formication means tactile hallucination. Tactile hallucination. Tactile hallucination means person feels some sand grain under the skin or insects crawling over the skin. Seen in case of cocaine. And in case of cocaine poisoning, it is specifically known as coke bugs or magnet symptoms or cocaine bugs. And it occurs together with delusion of persecution. Together with delusion of persecution. Remember, formication is also seen in other poisons also. Let me tell you. Magnus symptoms is seen in case of poisoning by cocaine. Visual and tactile hallucination has black staining of tongue and teeth. Cocaine. Formication and delusion of persecution occurs together in cocaine. It also occurs in case of amphetamine. Amphetamine. In amphetamine, it is specifically known as meth mites. Meth mites. Alcohol, withdrawal, arsenic poisoning and ergot poisoning. Arsenic and ergot poisoning. All these poisoning and alcohol withdrawal you can get for medication. Meth mites are seen in amphetamine. It causes excited delirium. Excited delirium. That is, everything increases. Take echardia, take kipnia, hypertension, hyperthermia, agitation, restlessness, incoordination, everything. <coughs> okay, everything. Look here. Exact delirium is seen in cocaine. Not suggestive of cocaine poisoning is easiest question. Bradycardia. Bradycardia. That is regarding these five important poisons. Okay. So, of course, I did not delay more than 8 o'clock, only 2 minutes. I tell you clearly, you can go through a lot of files and PDFs in my Telegram group and you can see the images in my Telegram channel, Telegram channel, Forensic underscore JP. Telegram, you can see here, Forensic JP is Telegram group. You can join that group. You can tell your friends also to join so that you can get benefit out of that. Okay? Wish you all the best. Do well for your examination. Stay cool always. Bye-bye.